oh, man, like, here, I, I got to give you something. And he goes in the other room and he came out with, uh, he goes, what size shoes are you? <laughs> and he came out with a pair of the striped Converse uh, 5150 oh, shoes. You know, and okay, he right, those. right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, fun. And then he goes, here, take this too. And he, got, he gave me one of his wah pedals, one of his striped wah pedals. Wow. You know, oh, my exchange. God. It was, Jesus. Yeah, it was really amazing. But and and then I was working on my first solo record. I brought him up a copy of a, a few of the tunes, and and he put that on and listened to it, and that was a thrill for me because he was like seemed really interested, and it was just like really sweet, you know, that he would care. And so we listened to that, and then he said, "Let me play you some stuff," and he started pulling out some different tracks. And I'll never forget that because it was amazing sounding. I mean, for, first of all, I remember him playing me, him and Wolf and Al, just rehearsing on a 24-track reel. So it was like he would multi-track stuff sometimes up there. So he just, you know, push play on the studio because they'd done it that morning, I think he said. So What did that sound like? Over. It was awesome. It was like, so <laughs> like, you know, I can't even remember what songs they were to tell you the truth, but it was classic tunes, you know. And so wow. he was rehearsing and he goes, listen to this because I was so into it. And he goes, well, check this out. And then he went and got a CD and he put it on of a mix of a tune that they've been working on and writing. And it's not a song that I've ever heard since. It was a fully realized idea, fully mixed, fully everything, but no vocals. And I right. think he'd done a lot of stuff like that and then was sending it to Dave to see what Dave thought. If right. He wanted to work on different ideas. So he played it for me and it had background vocals on it. They'd written some, you know, some vocal parts. It was a mid-tempo kind of rocker. Right. And I remember him kind of like faking the drum, like, you know, like he was pretending like he was playing the drums, wow. getting into it, and like going like, <laughs> wow. air out. drums, like this group. air drums. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then he, and then it went into the solo and he goes, okay, I just wanted to like, just like milk it on and like not do like a shred thing. And so he's playing like one really long bent note and just slow vibrato and milking this note. And I went like, oh man, that is cool. Like it sounded so great. And then he did some, you know, the flourish at the end kind of thing, you know, and wow. I was like, this. so I just remember saying, man, that is so good. Like, are you going to do that? And he goes, ah, I don't know, Dave will like it, something like that. And oh, I was like, shit. what? Like, <laughs> who cares? Good. <laughs> Another song lost in the vault. I Dave. know, yeah. I know. Another yeah, one. But Pete, but Pete, tell him the story. Tell him, I, maybe you were going to get to it, but I'll yeah. push you there. Ed reacted to Pete's playing. Tell, tell, oh, tell yeah. Him Did you actually get to jam with him? No, it was, oh, on, it was... on Pete's record. Oh. You, you, Pete, you told me the story where you played him something and he looked at you like, what the hell? Well, there was one, there was like one lick in this tune that I was playing him where it's this kind of fast tapping thing, ascending thing or whatever. And I remember him looking at me going like, what the hell is that? And he's kind of shaking his head and smiling. And I was like, oh my God, that means like, you know, I don't know. Like he really was like my spiritual guitar godfather so wow. like, yeah. to have that be like your dad looking at you and patting you on the shoulder and going good job son you know, yeah that kind of i can that imagine was, yeah, i can imagine meant Absolutely. so much to me, man. you're a hero like you know yeah with, like saying good job you know it meant so much to me it was really yeah special so and and that was a great that was one of the best hangs i can ever remember you know having with him we had some a few fun ones and that was just one of those days that, that was actually the day when i first drove up i remember getting out of the car this only happened once. Uh, Mitch had this experience, you know, jamming with the stuff recording, but this only happened to me once when I drove up and he was actually playing when I got there. And I remember going in the studio and there was guitar blast. He used to play loud. There was guitar blast. Really loud. Yeah. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. loud. <laughs> like even when he was in the control room, he yep. had it blasting out of the mains, out of the monitors, you know? Yep. And he's standing in there. So I, it's like, you know, there he is in the doorway, like kind of a few feet inside in front of the console and he's playing and it's just like, he's just ripping and he just kept playing for about 10 minutes kind of motion for me to come in and i stood there right in front of him and he just gave a little show like right and he's he's playing and he's leaning over to me sometimes and saying stuff like you ever try doing this this is the thing i'm like sliding <laughs> harmonics oh and like, he does this thing where he's like sliding i'd never seen him do it before and i'm like no what's that you know? <laughs> but he never stopped playing he just kept going and going i was just like oh my wow God, this is one of those like this is magic you know so that was so cool yeah, um, so now pete yeah. when did you learn of mitch's situation and did you know about that before he called you like how did you find out about the whole story with mitch and van halen I did. I saw the video that came out on YouTube that probably a lot of you guys had seen and, yep. and become aware of that story. Mitch, when did that come out, that video? That, uh, that was oh, like... Dave and Dave probably know... They know dates way more than I I do. think probably so 2016, I, 2016. Okay. I think yeah. somewhere around there, yeah. Sounds about right. That's when I, okay, yeah. so now did that blow your mind? Were you like, wait a minute, what? I found it so fascinating. And then to talk to Mitch about it, you know, and just get more, a little bit more of the backstory. But I mean, you really get quite a good idea of what happened, I feel like, from that yeah. that video, at least. And then Mitch sort of filled in the holes a bit for me. But it's such a... Uh, 
Well, you know, I mean, Mitch had a, it, obviously he was going to be the singer in the band. It's yeah. like, that's incredible. You know, I guess though, we've got a, a slight similar thing where it's just like what could have been and then it didn't, you know? So I guess we bonded on that because, and also just on the human aspect of Ed and the, and the experience that we, you know, it's just like, it was really great because Mitch is right. We didn't, we don't really have a lot of people, other folks we can talk to that have had that, like a, you know, that's, he was a very private guy, you know, right. Very, I think kept to himself. When you get to know him and, and you got to hang with him a little bit, you realize why he's a private guy. A lot's been said about him over the years, a lot of disparaging stuff and terrible things. And, and I just think like, man, nobody's perfect. And he right. had a really kind of a crazy story, a crazy upbringing, the right. whole, you know, coming over with no money, with right. his brother, not being able to speak the language. Right. You know, like kind of like him and his brother against the world. And, you know, they are like, to me, the American dream. They're American success. Totally. Story. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That, absolutely. you know, yeah. so I, I give him a lot of leeway. It doesn't mean he was always like a, you know, like he went through his dark phases for sure. There's a lot of those stories out there and stuff. But it's like, you know what? I, I, I'll tell you this from in the time I knew him from 2009 until he passed away. I really think he was trying to live his best life and do absolutely the best that he could. He was smart as a whip health conscious was trying to do everything like he was really trying to be on that like better himself even at you know a lot of people get set in their ways as you get older and stuff right, right. he was constantly trying to improve and and get to another better place when did you last yeah. speak with him okay the last time i would have spoken with him would be maybe a year before we texted and stuff but i'm not going to count that as speaking you know i we would text all the time but i mean like actually seeing him i went up to see him maybe a year before he passed away he was going through some treatments and a lot of things then you know right, that he was yeah. dealing with it. so he was very tired but you know I, I went up to see him i remember i'd been to japan on a trip and i brought him a you know how great some of the japanese guitar magazines are if yeah you're into, you know, sure. just incredible like the detail and how they get you know so into detail and stuff so yep. there was this amazing magazine but it was really like a book that came out that had photos from the early tours over there. That yeah, we have it. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like things he'd maybe never seen, I thought. So I uh -huh. got him one while I was there, and then I brought that up to him and gave it to him. But maybe you'd find it interesting. Um, rare pictures and stuff. So I brought that to him, and I remember we sat on the couch and watched TV for a few minutes. He was just wiped, and we sat. He goes, you want to watch a movie for a few minutes? So I said, sure. We sat there, and it was like Transformers or something was on. That oh, my God. And, so we watched that. I remember Al was up there as well for a bit and kind of came and went. But after about a half hour, I, I just one, one thing that was always good to do. And I, I guess this is part of playing with folks as a side man. I always try and read the room, not overstay my welcome. Good to know when to kind of be intuitive about that stuff. And I said after about a half hour, I said, you should I should go. You know, you should, I'll just let you rest because I know you're tired. So this is great to see you, man. It's, you know, I love you. And give him a big hug. And, you know, he kisses you on the cheek. I always did that. you know. And then I just saw myself out and stuff. And I left and I remember leaving. And, you know, that feeling like, because uh, both my parents have passed away. You know, I've been through a lot of loss, like at Chris sure. and people. And anyways, you know that feeling when you're like, you get that slightly heavy feeling. And I had that slightly heavy feeling, yeah. you know, leaving that day. Like, I just, you know, and I, might, I probably thought when I left, I wonder if I'm not going to see him again. Yeah. You know, I might have thought that. Wow. Getting in my car and driving away. And it just was, oh. I tried to oh, that's you know, just heavy. make peace with that. And I drove away and, and uh, you know. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, he was a lot nicer than he was ever nasty. He had a dark side, and I saw it, definitely. Yeah. You know, the time that I was with them, I saw the brothers get into it a bit. And, you know, I, you know, it was just human stuff, you know. But right. mostly he was so sweet and nice and giving and generous and loved you and, like, kissing you, like Pete said. And just, I don't know, man. He was just, he was a special dude. And, and when you left him, going away from him, I always floated away. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. Just, I always, you always felt better after being with him. Like, yeah. he gave you energy. Wow. You know, it was, mm -hmm. he was just a magical dude. He was one of those lucky guys who was able to put that into his music, and we all felt it. That's it, really it, well said. That's, yeah. that's awesome, Mitch. Yeah. Now, in terms of the show, now, did you have to, like, get Great White's blessing to go do this? Are you on hiatus from them right now, or what's going on with Great White? Oh, no, everything is fine with Great White. We're okay. working our butts off. I'm exhausted right now, as a matter of fact. So I haven't slept in four nights we're touring, we're working our butts off, and I had to just ask them for a week. You know, can I have this? I blocked this week, so that week of the show, so we could, you know, all get together and rehearse and then do okay. the show. Okay. And, and yeah. what's the status of Malloy? That's gone. That was just a kind of a COVID kind of let me do something okay. while COVID is happening. And it was kind of fun, but, you know, it, was, it kind of served its purpose and went away. What has been the fallout from the Rolling Stone piece? 
the Rolling Stone piece was really nice because I was just supposed to be a piece of their piece on it. And then they called me and I had so much to say and they had so many questions and it just turned into this massive feature that was never supposed to happen. And in fact, I didn't know it was happening until the night. Actually, I take that back. I didn't know it was happening until the morning that it came out. They texted me the night before and they said, your piece is coming out tomorrow. So I just thought I was just going to be like a little paragraph, you know, a tribute to Ed. And I opened it and it's like this huge thing on my experience with Van Halen. I was shocked and amazed. What it has done, I don't know. I guess it's maybe opened more people's eyes to the fact that Ed told me I was in the band and that I had an, an amazing experience with Van Halen and, and that I get to be part of their history. And I mean, you know, it's it just kind of legitimized the whole thing. Really. Sure. Sure. And in terms of this show, is there a charity element? Yeah. So Ed was really heartfelt about music for the schools. Right. Because, you know, that's been a problem with the schools. Uh, They're having a problem with the music. You know, there's not enough money, so they have to cut corners and they think, well, what do we got to cut? Oh, well, let's cut music. Okay. You know, so Ed tried to help that. So in honor of that, there's a new school here where I live in Destin, Florida, called Destin High School. And it's this is their first year and they need help and they need help with their music department. So we thought that we would benefit their music department with this show. That's awesome. So now what do you hope people to get out of this show? What do you want them to get out of it? And what do you hope to get out of it? Like Pete said initially, you know, it's, it's about our love for the music and just having fun doing it. You know, I think really that's the main thing. It just feels like something's pulling me to do it, you know, since Ed passed somehow. I don't know if it's Ed doing that or what. It it almost feels like it is. Like my connecting with Pete was so easy and I didn't know Pete before, you know, but he he was friends with Ed. So I don't know. It just feels like something that should happen. Like the music should be represented and we just want to really do our best 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 job to represent the music keep the music alive and you know i mean it it feels like a pure thing to me and pete what has been would you say the most challenging van halen song to conquer on guitar for you (laughs) i don't know you're gonna put me on the spot and then i'm gonna be like nervous playing that one no no, i don't know (laughs) I'll tell you what, it's kind of interesting. It's like a lot of the hard, okay, hard, like I'm the one is is pretty much a a whole solo of a song. I don't know how to describe it, you know, but I've known it for a long time. Like basically how it's some of the other ones like that I've never actually like, so it might surprise you, but like, you know, one thing about Eddie Van Halen is he was a rhythm guitar genius. Mm -hmm. So like playing the riff, for example, to Beautiful Girls properly. A lot of people can play, you know, eruption, the tapping part and stuff. People might think, oh, that's really difficult. If you're not a guitar player, you might think. But actually, if you can roll the volume down like he did on the guitar a little bit for the verse on Beautiful Girls and make it swing like he did, now you've really got something. Because right. almost nobody can do that. That's true. <laughs> Very few people get that. You know, it's got this. Yep. And it's the duration of the notes. And when you cut them off, as well as how you attack them, yep. oh, man, it's nobody swings like he did. <laughs> it's also the connection that he and Alex have the way they swing together, they weave in and out of each other. You know, he plays to the guitar, Alex, and it's just like a totally different vibe. And those two have played with each other for so long. They're almost like one... Alex never gets enough credit for that because obviously Ed is such a monstrous star. But but it's like the way he weaves in and out of Ed and the way they kind of meld together is really... Really unbelievable. Everybody who we've interviewed who has been in that studio always has the same thing to say, like, oh, you know, you guys hear the songs that come out of there, but you should hear when these two fucking jam. I mean, when they play <laughs> Cream together, they said it's, it's like dead. it's like unbelievable, which is always it's one. Dead. I always wondered why, like, you know, I obviously, you know, Ed was doing Van Halen. He always said, I never wanted to do a solo album because Van Halen is everything I want to do anyway. But if he and Alex and Wolf went out and just did like instrumental trio stuff i'm sure it would have been unreal like if they did something like that you know yeah so there's a lot of that stuff that's left at 5150 on the cutting room floor lots and lots of jams so hopefully one day we'll see all of that but listen it has been an absolute pleasure to have you guys on here i want to thank you so much pete i want you to realize 
What an incredible player. You can eat a little more confidence. You should call yourself Pete motherfucking Thorn from now on. I've seen you play, my friend. You're not like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm pretty good. Like, no, dude, you're unbelievable yourself. So, so you need to have your initials as Pete. 